All right, guys, welcome back to Urge. Moving on in the subclass series into the newest book, Tasha's Culture of Everything, with the first subclass from this book, The Armorer Artificer. Artificer. So we got, our, we got Alchemist Artificer, Armorer Artificer, Artillerist Artificer, and Bounce. And, 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 and the random man, But with this one, you basically have to become Iron Man, so that's, I mean, pretty much. that's it. Um, but if you're new to the channel, to the subclass series, what we are going to do is we're going to go through all the abilities gained in this subclass, and then we're going to rate it based on its RP value, combat value, and overall class synergy, based on how the abilities gained improve on the base class abilities. Also, we had a giveaway that we said would be happening oh, free stuff. when this book came out, so we have two winners for that that will be announced at the end of the video, so stay tuned. But you're not going to want to miss this anyway, because this is a really cool subclass. Yes, it is. So we'll jump straight into it. Alex, take it away. Got it. So, level three, you're going to get not one, not two, but, well, three <laughs> different things when you first to go into this subclass. Uh, tools of the trade, essentially, is heavy armor proficiency and smith tools proficiency. And if you already have smith tools from some other way, you can pick up their artisan tool of choice. Simple enough. You get... Special spells for your subclass. Magic Missile, Thunder Wave, Mirror Image, Shatter, Hypnotic Pattern, Lightning Bolt, Fire Show, Greater Invisibility, Pass Wall, and Wall of Force. So a combination of some uh, AOE damage, some uh, some kind of seat control stuff, and, and it's a good, some RPG. It's, it's, it's a good little mix in there. Yes. And then your main actual subclass feature, uh, and you know what the whole thing is built around, is your Arcane Armor. You can make any piece of armor that you're wearing Arcane Armor just by... Um, and yeah, that's our camera. Got there. Uh, got it. So what you get the following benefits while doing this. It, if armor normally has a strength requirement, that's null for you, essentially allowing you to wear any heavy armor you want and not have to worry about the strength requirement. Cool. Uh, you can use your arcane armor as your spellcasting focus. So it's like always on you all the time. No yes. extra pieces to carry around or whatever. It's yours. Armor, the armor cannot be attached or detached from you, removed from you, uh, against your will. So it's always there. And somebody tries to like, if they capture you, try to take it off of you, they can't. Uh, it also expands to cover your entire body. Uh, you can retract, deploy a helmet as a bonus action, and it even functions for missing limbs. So this armor can technically function as a prosthetic yes. for you, and you can doff or don the armor as a action. So with though arcane armor. There is another part to it. Because we're still in level that, three. Yes. <laughs> so this is still part of the Arcane Armor part, but there are armor models that you can choose from. There's two different options that you get. Uh, you can change the model when you finish a short or long rest, provided you have your Smith's tools in hand. And each of the models includes a special weapon. When you attack with the weapon, you can add your intelligence modifier instead of strength or dex to the attack and damage rolls. So, the two options you have are Guardian and Infiltrator. With the Guardian, you are looking to be in the front line, and with that, you get Thunder Gauntlets. The Gauntlets count as a simple melee weapon when you aren't holding anything in them, and deals 1d8 Thunder damage on hit. Creature hit by the Gauntlets has disadvantage on attack rolls against targets other than you until the start of your next turn, as the armor magically emits a distracting pulse when it tries to attack someone else. You also have Defensive Field. As a bonus action, you gain temporary hit points equal to your level in the Artificer class, and you replace any temporary hit points you already have, which is normal with temporary hit points right. in the stack. Uh, you lose the temporary hit points if you take off the armor. Uh, you can use this action, a num or bonus action, a number of times equal to your proficiency bonus. So, a little bit interesting on there. You're going to have it definitely set. You don't have to worry about no. building up your intelligence, though you have much more reason to now that you don't have to worry about strength or dex for your... Uh, attack rolls. Correct. The other option is the Infiltrator, which is a little bit more on the subtle side of things. Uh, and you get something called Lightning Launcher. A gem like note appears uh, on your armored fists or on your chest, your choice. It counts as a simple ranged weapon with a normal range of 90 and a long range of 300. It deals 1d6 lightning damage on hit on each of your turns, once per turn. Uh, when you hit a creature with it, it can deal an extra 1d6 lightning damage to the target. So when you hit them the first time, you deal basically 2d6 instead of 1d6, and then right. later on when you get extra attack, spoiler, uh, it'll just be the one time. So it'll be 2d6 the first hit and 1d6 for the second hit. Right. Um, you also increase your walking speed by 5 feet, 
and you get dampening field, you have advantage on stealth checks. If the armor imposes disadvantage, it cancels out the disadvantages for a normal roll, which right. is normal. So yeah, two interesting options if you want to be more on the damage sneaky side or you want to be more on the tanky uh, battlefield control disadvantage given tanky side. Indeed. So then at level five, you get, spoiler like I said earlier, <laughs> extra attack. Everyone knows what that does. So we'll move straight on to the next thing at level nine, which is armor modifications. Uh, you can learn how to infuse your arcane armor. The armor counts as separate items for the purpose of infusions, uh, broken down into multiple pieces, which are the armor, which is the chest piece, the boots, the helmet, and the special weapon. Each of the items can bear one of your infusions, and the infusions trans over, transfer over if you change the armor model. Uh, also, the maximum number of infusions, uh, or items that you can infuse, increases by two, but those two extra must be part of the arcane armor. Sure. So essentially, what it's letting you do is it's letting you replace maybe something else that you would want to get for like RP purpose. Like if you had a replicate item, well, now you can infuse yourself twice and still get that other thing for fun later. Right. Finally, at 15, because yes, there's a lot to this subclass, you get an additional benefit for each uh, armor model choice, depending on which one you do. With Guardian, when a huge or smaller creature enters its end, it ends its turn within 30 feet of you, you can see it. You can use your reaction to try to make it, to force a strength saving throw. Then you can then pull that sucker up to 30 feet towards you to an unoccupied space. If you pull a target within 5 feet of you, you can make a melee weapon attack against it as part of the same reaction. You can use this equal t number of times equal to your proficiency bonus... That's going to be a recurring theme in this book. You're in all uh, all uses when you have a long rest at the end of the day. And the other thing that I, he and I talked about before we were going through this is it does not specify enemy. It does not. So it says a it, creature. A creature. So if your friend is about to get swarmed by something and they've ended their turn, you just whoop, get over here. <laughs> just pull, pull them out of danger. Or you've got somebody in your party who's slower than you, and, and you know, they got this. Right. <laughs> you're trying to run away. It's like, yeah, yeah. come on. <laughs> Leap of faith, priest. Yes. <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, the other thing you get for the other armor model is in a forever trader, is anytime the creature takes light damage from your you know, lightning launcher, which is still an odd thing for a more subtle approach. You know, lightning, yeah, launch, lightning launcher. I'm sneaky <laughs> with stealth, but I can shoot off electrical grenades. grenades. <laughs> right. All right, so if somebody's hit with that, they emit magical light to the start of your next turn. The sheds dim light, five foot radius, has disadvantage on attack rolls against you. As the, the light jolts attacks you, in addition, the next attack roll against it has advantage. If that attack hits, take an extra 1d6 lightning damage. So, with extra attack, you can shoot the lightning launcher. If you hit 2d6, it triggers, you know, that now the next time to hit it, has advantage along with that bonus lightning damage. Yes. Well, then you can issue the lightning launcher again. If you hit with advantage, you get to do that extra 1d6. So you've done 2d6 both times. Right. Because the first time you hit, and it's, then because it has the trigger from this, the second time you hit, it's going to deal extra. And then because you've already hit it and you've stuck it again, the next attack. The, the next attack, which could be you know somebody else in your party, would also have advantage and would still do the extra 1d6 lightning damage. So. Mm -hmm. That sounds fun. It's like a chain lightning reaction. Yeah, indeed. Something, something like yeah, I'm, sorry. I'm immediately thinking like, okay, what what caster in my party can set up some big spell right that goes right after me in the service order? And I'll try to go before a rogue. Give him that fair. Give that uh, uh, auto, <laughs> auto sneak. Every time I said something about a banjo, I just think about rogues. I mean, yeah, every time. But uh, yeah. That, well, that is the entire list of abilities. There is a lot. That being said, we'll move on to the roleplay section rating portion of the video. Right. Asterisk, as always, when we talk about roleplay value, we're talking about interacting with the world around you, interacting with NPCs, non-combat scenarios, avoiding combat, things outside of the initiative order, essentially. Right. We are not talking about acting out your class fantasy, history, lore, background. All that is on you as the player, and we can't rate you as a player. We can only rate what's in the book on the abilities. So, only you know whether you're a good player or not. Yeah, I'm not going to say that. Uh, but anybody knows though. With all of these things, you'll notice there's not really a whole lot of RP going on at first glance. But if you look into all of these abilities, there's a lot of little things being given in every single ability. So you're gaining some uh, proficiency with Smith tools. Sure, that could potentially have some RP potential. You're also gaining access to some spells that could be used in RP, such as Pass Wall, Greater Invisibility, 
hypnotic pattern can be as well sometimes. Um, and then of course the armor itself, it can re it can you know re retract and do interesting you know armor face, non armor face. You can maybe surprise some people with yeah. that. I've Replace got missing limbs. Yeah, missing limbs. Yeah. So there's definitely some potential there with the RP. Um, and then the actual armor models himself. Looking at the infiltrator. Uh, early on, you're getting increased movement speed and advantage on stealth checks, which can definitely be used in RP, because usually stealthing outside of combat, though you can stealth inside of combat, especially rogues will do this as a bonus action to try to get sneak attacks and stuff, but usually you'll be using it outside of combat, especially with this subclass. Um, extra attack, I mean, that's combat, you can't really avoid that. Uh, yeah. um, and then the, like I kind of mentioned this earlier, with the armor modifications, being able to infuse your, your armor and gain those two extra infusion slots that can be used for the armor, it frees up those slots that you could use for RP in other circumstances. So it's kind of like an indirect RP yeah. buff on there because it's freeing up two extra slots that you can use elsewhere without having to worry about it. And then last at level 15, like Alex was saying, you can pull allies with the Guardians upgrade right. uh, towards you so you maybe find a way to cross a chasm that's with, you know, within 30 feet and then you just yoink over some allies that would have trouble getting across it on their own. Pretty solid on the RP, we yeah. thought. So we actually ended up giving it a 4 out of 5, surprisingly enough, considering this does seem to be focused primarily on combat, but it is... A lot of little stuff adds up. Adds up. Yeah. Yes. On the combat side of things, and usually, you know, we talk about the whole, like, lower, higher, lower, higher thing. This is an, an unusual situation to yes. as of late, where a lot of the specific things you immediately think of combat, so it becomes obvious the combat's going to be pretty good. And... So, you get some nice AoE spells with Thunder Wave, Shatter, a Lightning Bolt. Then you can do some really fun things like Greater Invisibility, which is still great in combat. Mirror Image to help with you know some defensive. Yep. So, there's some really good spells that you're allowed to have. Uh, being able to not only get heavy armor proficiency, but making your your armor, your spell casting focus, one less thing you have to worry about in combat, about do I have my focus and loot, you know, right. depending on how you know, tight your DM with, with, with rules is and things like that. Um, but you know, being able to just magically replace the limbs, you can actually carry carry a weapon or whatever if you so choose right. to. And the fact to me, the the biggest thing is what makes this combat the combat for this really really good is the fact that you can change between guardian and infiltrator not every day, right. but just on a short rest. Right. I mean, it'd be okay <laughs> because a lot of other you know subclasses that kind of have different kind of builds within things like that. You mm -hmm. once you make that choice, like that's your choice. Think of like, you know, the Totem Barbarian or even yeah. uh, Storm Herald Barbarian. You pick between which of these things you want and that's what you got. You, right. That's where, it's where they are. Whereas this is done up and you've got both this, you know, melee support kind of, you know, punch, punch people and, you know, kind of Iron Man suit. You know, the original Iron Man suit that he makes back in the cave. Uh, and, you know, forcing disadvantage on attack rolls against people that aren't you. Kind of like a soft taunt. Not, you know, so if they don't yeah, attack you, yeah, they're right. getting penalized. Um, and then getting giving yourself temporary hit points, helping you you know with survival as well, mm -hmm. or you've got more of the range drop and options, kind of like this little stealthy assassin kind of thing, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, to you fire a big lightning grenade at somebody. Uh, but not only that, the, the, the damage itself is not not incredible. It's not artillerist artificer, but you get, still... but, once, but once you hit the the whole you know set extra attack, you can get two ranged attacks dealing. You know, 2d6 and 2d6 plus your modifiers. And then you can infuse that for doing even more damage if you take, right. like, an enhanced yeah. weapon. Yeah. Um, and you're getting advantage on your second attack if you stick somebody with it. And then you're giving somebody else in your party advantage on an attack that way. So it's it's got some more uh, built-in party synergy, which is, again, another thing that's really common in this book. Um, you know, and the fact, you know, two extra infusions, it, it lets you be a lot more free-flowing with... You know, pick, picking, you're like, I'm going to have to forgo this, make sacrifices. you got a lot more choices to pick from. Yeah, being able to pull stuff in and out of trouble can be fun. Uh, both you know, in combat to pull enemies to you to make sure you could punch stuff or to pull allies out of trouble. And then again, the extra advantage and extra attack, extra damage, and then causing disadvantage if you go that way. So you're harder to hit. I mean, there's, whew, there's a lot. There's a lot. That's about as shorthand as I can make it. We went with a four and a half. Out of a possible five, and probably the only way that goes to a five is if just some of the damage numbers were higher, maybe. Yeah, I mean um, the utility is very strong. I think some of the abilities being limited by proficiency is pretty is pretty solid. Yeah. Um, but early on, that's going to hinder your 
it's gonna be very limited early on. I mean, there could definitely be some arguments to, to push for a five. I think this is sure. a very strong combat subclass. With, oh, absolutely. With that said, we will move over to the final section, which would be class synergy. Yes, and with the class synergy, um, I mean, there's a, there's a lot going on here. Again, <laughs> uh, I'll try to keep it concise as best I can. But with the Artificer, you do have access to spells, uh, though you're more limited. You're not a full caster. Right. Um, so having the extra spell options is solid, and the abilities that you gain with those spells um, are varied in you know, not just all on one combat or RP, they're kind of mixed in a pretty good way, I would say. Yeah. Um, also, being able to switch forms makes a big difference, and you're getting to focus all of your stats into intelligence, which I think is huge. You don't have to worry right. about strength or dex at all. Nope. You could, if you don't want to. Um, dex is never a bad thing to have. Strength can, can be dumped, essentially, without having to worry too much about it, other than, you know, the occasional strength save, but yeah. those aren't too common. Gra grapple checks, things like that. Yeah. But, that being said, there are so many ways to use your infusions to empower yourself, and then getting two extra uses of infusions on top of that mm -hmm. is kind of crazy, because you can still make uh, items, you can still use items in these uh, things here, sure. but, you know, you're not going to, if you dump your uh, attack stat, then you're going to have some issues trying to use weapons if you right. try to use, like, another weapon. Um, that's why you probably want to focus primarily on your special weapons that are part of the armor and just be more of a utility battlefield supporter than worrying about too much about the damage output. Right. Because being able to force disadvantage or give advantage is can be a huge thing in and of itself. Yep. So there's a lot going on, lots of benefits, and, you know, the Artificer is all about your spells, your infusions, and with this subclass, there is a huge focus on those two things. Mm -hmm. So we went with a five on the class synergy. So there's a lot going on, very synergistic with this subclass. It's a very interesting, yep. cool, unique yeah. thing. That's one thing I like about the Artificer. It brings a whole new like yep. flavor into It gives intelligence some use as well, besides wizards. <laughs> right. Yeah, there's not really a whole lot using that stuff. Yeah. So uh, all that being said, that's going to wrap it up for this one, guys. But... Before we end the video, we do have our announcement for the winners, so drum roll. We have the two, I'll put them up on the screen, boop! I believe it is da -da -da. E and Mark Wells are the winners. So make sure you contact uh, us, we have our email in the about section on our channel page, so make sure you email uh, me and we will verify that you are who you say you are, because we're not going to you know, give your book to someone else. We're going to make sure the thing goes to the right person, so we got to verify you're at who you are and uh, get those books sent out to you. Free stuff. So make sure you email us. Don't forget to do that. So congratulations to you guys. And uh, if you enjoyed the video, of course, like, subscribe, hit the bell notification. So I've, I've lost my out. bell. It's all right. It's kind of loud. I've had to try to... <laughs> try to it's kind of like trying, trying, to, trying to fix it, yeah. But, uh, <laughs> so when we do our next giveaway, you'll already be prepared. So there's that. Also, let us know in the comments down below what you really want to see from us in this new book. There's a lot going on. Really interesting. Make sure, you, make sure you check out our other videos that we talked about. And I would like to close with this. And I probably will do this running right forward with the uh, the rest of these. They did a great job. They have a little one-line quote from Tasha for each of these subclasses. So this is what Tasha thinks about the armor. Classic artificial logic right there. What if when our invention goes explosive or wrong, we're inside it? I like it. Yeah, it's great stuff. Well, that's going to wrap it up for this one, guys. As always, thanks for watching.